Okay, well... Aloha folks, welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. I hope you enjoyed last week's show with Miss Pinup Palmer. Probably one of my favorite episodes that we've ever done. I think it's... Well, it's definitely the funniest. Uh, uh, I don't know. McBiff was funny. Brianna was funny. So if you haven't seen it, go back and watch that episode. It's really good. We made a Trader Vic's cocktail called the Shark's Tooth. Tonight, we're gonna make a Don the Beachcomber cocktail. I have come across Hawaii. Tropical rum drinks and cuisine by Don the Beachcomber. This is from 2001, so it's vintage, I guess. Well, God, what is that, 20 years old? But Don Beach didn't write this himself. I believe one of Don's ex-wives, new husbands wrote this. Anyway, great book. One of my favorite Don the Beachcomber cocktails is the Sidewinder's Fang. I was flipping through here and I came across the Cobra's Fang. The Cobra's Fang was from 1937 and I've never had it before. So I figured now was as good as ever to try out a new Don the Beachcomber cocktail. <laughs> well, a new Don the Beachcomber cocktail from 1937. New to me. Let's go. For this cocktail, we will be using oranges, limes, Angostura bitters, passion fruit syrup, falernum, which is homemade from a friend of mine, absinthe, and 151 Demerara rum. First off, we need half an ounce of lime juice. And that is exactly one half ounce of lime juice. We'll be pouring that into this tin. Half an ounce of orange juice. That is half an ounce of orange juice. And we got some little dudes in here. Uh, just pulp, nothing weird. I think Martin Kate says that you should strain your juices. From somebody like Smuggler's Cove, that's probably the way to do it. Half an ounce of passion fruit syrup. Whew, that's delicious smelling. And passion fruit syrup. Quarter ounce of falernum. God, I love the smell of that. It's um, it's that famous Dawn spice. It's just a, it's a spice that Don the Beachcomber loved to use in his cocktails. Okay, so just a quarter ounce of that, which is too bad because I love this stuff. One and a half ounces of Hamilton 151. Ah, oh, God, that's a good smelling rum. And the last ingredient is six drops of absinthe. So I've already put absinthe in this little dropper guy here. One, two, three. Cool. All right, so there's the cocktail. That was quick, man. Either I'm getting better at this or the drinks are getting easier or, I don't know. Okay, we need ice now. Let's fill this tin with some ice. And as per most Don the Beachcomber cocktails, we're gonna use the Hamilton Beach top-down mixer. All right, just about five seconds of mixing with that. Woo, look at that. And as per any cocktail, you wanna make sure that it's filled all the way to the top with ice. So we'll add more ice to fill. Okay, that is a delightful treat, isn't it? Look at that. So with this cocktail, I thought it'd be cool to do a really interesting garnish. I've seen this all over the web. I've seen this in Martin Kate's book, Smuggler's Cove, where they make a little snake out of an orange peel. So we're gonna do that now. This is just a standard vegetable peeler. You just kind of find a spot and start. It's kind of nerve wracking because you don't want to blow it and have a short snake. I wonder if we can get the whole orange. Super snake. Okay, that was a good one. So we're gonna cut a little neck for him. And then the body. Man, this is quite the snake. <laughs> Cocktail snake. Okay. 
And then other side. We'll get rid of these things. Oh, we gotta poke his eyes. <laughs> okay, and then we gotta do his face here. Okay, snaky. How about that one? So we're gonna let him sit for a minute. Don Beach says to put a cinnamon stick in there. So we'll do that. And I like over garnishing stuff sometimes. So we're also gonna add, this is a vintage Don the Beach Comer cocktail pick. We're gonna put a maraschino cherry on there. What the hell do you grab these things? I try not to touch these things because they're so gross. That stuff gets all over the place. Okay, so we're gonna put the maraschino cherry in here with the cinnamon stick. And then, okay, now let's see what we can do here. We're gonna bring his little head down and then we're gonna wrap him around this cherry and the Don the Beachcomber logo. And I think, uh oh, we'll put the Don the Beachcomber thing on top and then wrap the snake around and let him fall down off the back. Okay, and there's the cocktail. <laughs> That's ridiculous. And I've said it before, but that's why I love Tiki. It's escapism. It's going to the jungle via your cocktail. The dangerous jungle with snakes and cherries, I guess. All right, and so from 1937, Don the Beachcomber, the Cobra's Fang. Ooh, wow. Wow, that's interesting. I'm getting... I'm getting the absinthe a little bit, and I'm definitely getting the 151. The falernum's in there. There's heat from the rum, for sure. Wow, that's a good drink. Oh, man. I feel bad because I think people enjoy to watch the videos of the cocktails where I'm like, oh, God, what the hell? But that's a good cocktail. Wow. 1937 Don the Beachcomber, so that means Hollywood. That means the first location. So if you can only imagine the people that were ordering Cobra's Fangs in Hollywood, Don the Beachcomber. It's a pretty incredible thing. And I've said it before, it's uniquely American. It's really, that's a really a cool thing, isn't it? Coming up next weekend, I'm gonna have my two-time Playboy model, Miss Tiffany Toth joining us. And if you're wondering where I'm getting all these guests, these are usually models that I photograph. If there's somebody in particular that you wanna see in this video series, leave a message in the comments below and I will do my best to try to make that happen. I mean, it's gotta be within reason. It can't be like Johnny Depp or something. You know what I mean? God, that's good. It's got the Don the Beachcomber flavor profile. It's like cinnamon, the falernum. The fruit juices just serve as a platform for all the, other, the other flavors to sit on. So it doesn't taste overly limey or overly orange juice, but it's just a really well-balanced cocktail. That's a good one, man. Make that one at home. All right, folks, well, I hope you enjoyed the show. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next cocktail video. Aloha. 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 Ooh, too much orange juice. Hmm. That's good. How are we gonna do this? Maybe I can stab it into the, stab it into the snake? Yeah, 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 like that. That's rad. But we don't want that pointing downhill. Okay, so, man. Ah, I broke his tail! I broke his tail. Can I mend this? What are you, what are you even talking about? Can you mend this? Uh, what am I gonna do? Make another one? Yes. Snake part two. And then we get, I'd be the worst real bartender because the drinks would be all watered down. And I'd take forever. I'd be, I'd be sitting there explaining how to make them the whole time. Okay, get out of here. If you want to see somebody on the show, why don't you leave a message in the comments below? If there's somebody in particular that you want to see on this show, I mean, within reason, you know, I'm not going to get Demi Moore on here. Demi Moore? Aloha. <laughs> Stupid. So dumb. All right, so the show's over and I'm just sitting here enjoying the cocktail and I realize, I don't think I put Angostura bitters in there. So, 
I already squeezed the fruit juices. I already put in the passion fruit syrup. I need a quarter ounce of falernum. If you can hear that snarling, that's my dog trying to find a rat right now. It's very frustrating. Falernum, one and a half ounces of this. I feel like we just did this. <laughs> that's, a, that's a heavy one and a half ounces. And then we forgot this. I tell you, it's so hard to keep track of all this stuff through all of these episodes. Okay, let's see how much of a difference a dash makes. That is, an, that is a quintessential Don the Beachcomber flavor though. It's that spice. Oh, hold on. And then of course, six drops of absinthe. One, two, five, six. Well, let's see, do we have any ice left? Okay, mix it. Excuse me there, snaky. Astro. Oh, lost the snake. Jeez, what a mess. Okay, put the snake back, put the cherry back. So, from 1937, this is the Cobra's Fang. I mean, I feel like I taste a difference, but it's not noticeable enough to go like, oh, that's the Cobra's Fang. It's more like, all right, I guess, I, I don't know, it's good. This tastes great. I was gonna make a second one anyway. 